We've got our KitchenAid mixer here with a bowl, our dough hook, we've got flour here, we've got, this is high gluten flour, we've got oil, we've got active yeast here, dry yeast, instant yeast, whatever you want to use, um, we've got fine salt, we've got uh, garlic powder, it's in a garlic salt thing but it's actually garlic powder, we've got onion powder, we're going to use this for our warm water and this is what our outcome is gonna look like. So let's go ahead and hop into the video. So first things first, if you guys are new here, my name's Colin Brack and I'm the owner of Pizza Stop and I'm showing you guys how to make my recipe at home. Now this is a little bit different than what I use inside the store, but the reason why is because you're not gonna be cooking at the temperatures that I cook at in the store and you're not gonna be cooking with the type of oven that I do. So I'm going to change this recipe just a little bit and it's actually pretty generic. A lot of people use this recipe, know this recipe. We're gonna bake this dough different. First things first, we're gonna be working with this dough with our bare hands. It's super hard to work with pizza dough and gloves. If you haven't done it, you should try it once and just see why people don't do it. But we're also cooking this at 500 plus degrees. Nothing's really gonna live, but we're gonna make sure to wash our hands first. So let's do that. Now that we've washed our hands and we've got warm water, we're gonna take our bowl, and this may be different depending on the temperature you're in, the room you're in, how warm it is, outside the temperatures. There's gonna be a lot of things that factor into this, so keep in mind, you're gonna have to adjust a couple little things based on those. If it's raining, you're gonna need to add just a little bit less water because there's moisture in the air. It's just little things that you guys will learn as you're making this. So if you need to come back and watch this video a couple times, catch some tips and tricks, be sure to do so. Save it to your favorites, drop a like for us. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run warm water in this to bring the bowl temperature up so that when I pour my warm water in with my ingredients that I'm about to tell you, it doesn't bring down the temperature and shock the water and it doesn't quite activate the yeast. So I'm gonna go ahead and get warm water. Rinse the bowl. Feel the bottom of the bowl. Now, this will be more necessary if you have a glass bowl. Stainless bowls, things like that, are not going to need this as much. Now that I've rinsed that and got my temperature up, I am going to put my bowl in here and I will add my ingredients. We've got the inside of our bowl warm and brought up to temperature, so now we are going to go ahead and add in some dry ingredients, put our warm water in, mix it up, then we'll add our oil. Alrighty guys, so for today's video, we're gonna be making two 12 to 14 inch dough balls. Now, if you wanna just make one, you can go ahead and cut this recipe in half, but this is good in the fridge for like 24 to I'd say, uh, 56, 60 hours, somewhere in there, so about two and a half days. So if you wanna make it today, or tomorrow I mean, then try it the next day, you can go ahead and use the same batch of dough. So for today's recipe, we are going to use four cups of flour, or 480 grams of flour. You're gonna use 10 to 12 grams of active or instant dry yeast. We're gonna be using four teaspoons of our sugar. We're gonna be using two tablespoons of our oil. I use vegetable oil. You can use, and then we're gonna be doing one and a half teaspoons of salt. We're gonna do one teaspoon of garlic powder and one teaspoon of onion powder and one and a half cups of warm water. That warm water you want to be between 105 and 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and we are gonna start by adding our four teaspoons of yeast. Next, we are going to go ahead and add in our one teaspoon of onion powder. One teaspoon of garlic powder. Next, we're gonna be adding one and a half teaspoons of salt. If you're a salt lover like I am, go ahead and add just a little bit extra. And now we're gonna go ahead and give a little bit of sugar for feeding that yeast. So we're gonna go ahead and add our three teaspoons or one tablespoon. At this point, go ahead and grab your warm water. We're gonna pour it in here, and then we need to mix all this stuff up to make sure that nothing gets stuck to the bottom. So we've got our water here. I'm gonna start with one cup. I'm gonna go ahead and mix it all off the bottom. Make sure that nothing gets stuck or we don't have a pocket of that onion powder in a bite of the pizza. 
Go ahead, mix everything up. Now we're gonna let this sit for about five to, I don't know, eight, 10 minutes. Depending on how warm your water was, it might be a little faster. Depending on how cool the bowl was, it might be a little slower. I'll show you guys what we're looking for. Now take your other half cup of water and your hand with the yeast on it. Go ahead and rinse the rest of that dry mix down back into the bowl. So at the start of our process, it's gonna look a little something like this. You can see it started to activate and it's bubbling up here just a tiny bit. We're gonna want that to happen over the whole entire top of this. So while we're waiting for that, let's go ahead and talk about the awkward stage of what's gonna happen with this dough. So we're gonna add our flour in and we're gonna start to mix it together. And it's not gonna look like pizza dough at first, but what we need to do is we need to let it do its thing, okay? This is gonna take about 12 to 14 maybe 15 minutes. Now that we've activated and woke up the yeast, we're going to heat up the dough by mixing it in this bowl. Now, if you do this by hand, you just need to work fast and you need to, um, you need to keep a consistent rhythm so that it keeps growing those gas bubbles, that carbon dioxide inside, so that you can have that gas release inside the dough while it's in its cold fermentation process that we'll talk about in just a little bit. But what's really important is the mixing process. We wanna cook the dough, but we want that chewy texture on the inside. And I'll show you guys when we're testing this what I'm talking about. Our yeast is starting to do its thing, so I wanna show you guys what that looks like. You can see here, it's starting to grow all the way across the top. It's not no longer just on the one side. This is ready to go, so I'm, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and add my two tablespoons of oil. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my hook on, make sure that's locked in place so that that doesn't happen. After that's locked in place, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and take your tablespoon of oil, and if you do this over the bowl, you'll never worry about spilling it outside of the bowl. Then we're gonna go ahead, and we are gonna just run this oil along this hook before we dip it down into the dough. You'll thank me later on the cleanup process if you do this. At this point of the process, I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle my one more teaspoon of sugar on top. Go ahead and get that yeast getting fed. This is what we look like with the oil and almost all of our dry ingredients in. Now we're gonna go ahead and add the flour. So for flour, the best thing you can do is overfill it and then tap it down so that it kind of settles in there until you get your nice flat top. And that's how I keep it consistent. We're gonna go ahead and add four cups to this batch. This is cup number three. And this is cup number four. After you've got your flour in your bowl, you're gonna take just a little bit and you need to get a little bit of water. This time, we're gonna go with cold water. Now, we're gonna go ahead and start mixing. You can see the yeast growing up out of there. Turn your mixer to the lowest setting after being plugged into power. Make sure not to put your fingers in the bowl and turn it to the first setting. If you turn it higher than that, you're gonna blow all that flour out of there and it's gonna create a mess. We're gonna let this mix on the lowest setting for about two to three minutes, and I'll check in with you guys in just a minute.
Now it's important not to let this get too hard and dry out too much because it's hard to get that to come back and give you that soft chewy texture. So what we're gonna do is, now that we've been mixing for a couple minutes, we're gonna go ahead and turn that to the next setting. And we're gonna go ahead and add just a tiny bit of water. Once you notice your texture and your sticky starting to go away and everything peeling away from the sides, go ahead and add just a tiny bit more water. If you add a little too much water, it's not the end of the world, but you're gonna have to bring it back with just a little pinch of flour. So we're keeping the ball, it's turning over itself now, it's mixing, it's doing its thing. It's starting to peel away from the sides. We're gonna go ahead and add just a touch of water. So I'm gonna show you guys just real quick what it looks like if you do add too much water, just in case it happens to you at home. So as you see down in the bottom, what's starting to happen is it's not turning over itself, it's just pushing that bottom stuff down. And if you add too much water, it's gonna just push it all down and peel up what it can, instead of pulling it away from the sides and doing this motion and curling it back up over so that it can keep overturning itself. That actually wasn't too much water, but notice here now how it's pushing down just in the middle and it's actually not turning over itself. It's gonna take a little longer to bring this back. So what you can do is grab just a pinch and make sure to drop it above where the arm is so it doesn't get you and just go ahead and drop a couple pinches of flour in and it'll go ahead and start turning over itself a little better, just like that. And you're gonna use that in the pinch method to just bring it back to that perfect sweet spot where it's gonna start peeling everything away from the outsides. We're almost there. And then you can uh, add a little bit more water. You can go ahead and turn your speed up one more setting, you don't ever want to go above midway. Pizza dough is designed for like, not designed. The technique of pizza dough is to spin a little bit slower for a longer time, not faster for a shorter time. You don't get the quite, the, you don't get quite the right consistency if you're not doing it that way. So now it's peeling away from the sides. We're going to go ahead and add a little water. See, the idea is to get the water level to where it doesn't just push it down in the bottom. It keeps turning over itself so that that water can get worked into the middle and not just one side of the dough and not the other.
Okay, we're mixing, we're about at the halfway point here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna feel this, okay? So right now it's still a little too stiff but it's starting to get that texture that I'm looking for. Now, how you're gonna realize what texture you're looking for, all these wrinkles you want to come out. Now, you're gonna work this so hard that all those wrinkles are gonna come out and we're gonna keep adding water so that our hydration comes up as we're mixing. too firm, that's why it's not blending together. Okay, so you guys can see here, I've added a little too much water. See how it's sticking to the bottom there and taking too long to turn over itself? That's okay, just give it a second, let it come back. If you need to, throw one pinch of flour on there. Let's see how it's coming back. At this point, you're able to add a little more water at a time because the consistency is there. It's not flour and water, it's dough that you're adding water to. Okay, so at this point, we're gonna go ahead and stop it. It's getting a lot softer, but we still have some wrinkles in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just peel this down. Now, if you oiled your hook, this will be very easy. Go ahead and start that back up. Go ahead and add a little bit of water. So at this point, all we're doing is softening the dough up. We have all the ingredients in, we just need the texture that we want. Now, when you get to the point where you're getting close to that 12 to 14 minutes, you're gonna wanna turn this up one or two degrees. Degrees, settings, I don't know.
Alrighty guys, so after you mix it to the point where you can start to see all those wrinkles are going away, you're gonna go ahead and feel it. What you want is you want it to be sticky enough to get to your fingers, but you don't want it to be sticking to say everything. So you wanna be able to peel it away from the sides of the bowl with a little effort. So kinda like that. This isn't quite ready. We need it to go just one more minute and just probably one more water mixture so you can guys can kind of see how sticky. Now a lot of people don't like it this sticky. I do and I'll show you how it's easy to work with. Okay, at this point, I think we're getting pretty dang close. I'm gonna go ahead, turn it off, and I will drop the bowl, and I'm gonna go ahead and just use my hands. I'll show you guys as best as I can with one hand here. But I'm gonna go ahead, and I'm gonna just slide my fingers down this hook, get everything off of it that I can. I'll go ahead and undo the hook, drop it, and then I'm just gonna take and slide my fingers down it, get all that off as much as I can, and then when the rest of that dries up, you'll be able to just go ahead and roll it off. Super easy. Okay, I know a lot of people are gonna have mixed opinions about this. This is cornmeal. I didn't uh, have this out in our video instructions. I forgot it in the fridge. I'm gonna take a pinch of this, maybe two pinches, and then I'm gonna take a pinch of flour. And I'm gonna put those two together. Not a whole lot, not a whole lot. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take and scrape out our dough. As you guys can see, it's still stuck to the side. That's okay, because if it's not stuck to the side, you're gonna have a dough that's way too hard and not gonna have that crunchy but soft texture. Go ahead, pull your dough out and set it right on the flour and cornmeal mixture. Now, to get the rest out of the bowl, you're gonna take just a small piece like this. You're gonna go ahead and just work inside that bowl, just like you guys saw the beater do and it pull away from the sides. You're gonna go ahead and do the same thing, just kinda work it around like this. Get the majority of it, get your bowl out of the way. Go ahead and roll this over in your flour and your cornmeal mixture. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna kinda knead it from the top and pull out around and get it to go underneath itself. Okay, we want just like this. And then you're gonna kind of flatten it out a little bit. And you'll take and you'll be able to cut this whether you do three 10 inch pizzas or two 14 inch pizzas or two 12 inch pizzas and have a little tiny one for your baby or whatever you wanna do. Next thing you're gonna do, I'm gonna use one of these. If you don't have one of these, they're nice. I'll drop a link down in the description. You can just go ahead and you can separate your dough balls just like this. And then what you're gonna do to ball them is you are going to, you're gonna take and you're gonna roll them. The faster you move on this, the less it gets stuck to your hand. So you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna just start peeling from the inside. You're gonna push it over itself. See how when I go slow, it gets all stuck. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna start working this. I'm gonna peel underneath itself. You guys can see just like that, I'm gonna start rolling it. Now, at this point, it's not gonna stick. Okay, so if you let this sit here for just a second and it starts to stick, just go ahead and roll it over itself. Start working with that now and you will have a easy to work with dough ball. If it's too sticky, go ahead and throw a little bit of oil on your hands, mix it in there. But if you let it sit for a second and dry out, you'll be perfect. So that is a secret right there. Some people are trying to work with the dough way too soon, okay? If you let it sit right here in dry out if you push it out like i said take your scraper get it just like that we're going to take one plate just take a little bit of oil a little bit of oil show you guys how much i mean by a little bit just a tiny bit there you're going to take this and put your sticky side down got the oil on my hand 
Just like that, you have some pizza dough ready to go. We're gonna use this one, we're gonna make some breadsticks. Okay, another secret I'm gonna teach you right here is all these little wrinkles that you see in the dough, as soon as those start to disappear, we're good to put in the fridge, okay? So now, what this is gonna look like, you guys are gonna put this into a cold fermentation process, and you are going to get a dough ball that looks like this. This is huge, this might be a 14 inch pizza. This may be a 14 inch pizza, guys. Again, please keep in mind, I make these inside the pizzeria, and I make like a 50 to 100 pound batch. I don't even know how much it weighs at a time. I'm usually not doing single or two doughs. But this one has been sitting, so we are gonna go ahead and show you guys how to stretch and make the rest of our pizza at this point. These have been sitting out for 20 minutes. We're gonna go ahead and put these into the fridge uncovered. I know a lot of people are gonna fight with this. Leave them uncovered. Let them air out and cool down for three hours. After three hours, you're going to cover them for the most part. For the most part, leave a little tiny gap. After another three to four hours of having a little gap, you can go ahead and fully close it, and then that will keep a little bit of heat inside, and it's going to actively grow. This is going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. This is going to be perfect at about 36 hours of cooling and making time. This is not a simple process, and this is not for people who don't have to patience and time. And while we're on the subject of taking care of your balls, let's talk about the sponsor for today's video. Manscape has provided us with a Performance 4.0 package featuring the Weed Whacker 2.0, the all-in-one ear and nose hair trimmer with skin safe technology to help from cuts and nicks. We also have the Lawn Mower 4.0, which is the device that every man needs. It's got a light built in so you can do your business in the dark. It's waterproof so you can do your business virtually anywhere. It's got a smooth ceramic blade so that you can help reduce nicks and cuts on the skin. We've got a fully rechargeable battery and a travel case for it. We also have Crop Reviver, which is like a breath mint for the balls. We have a Crop Preserver, which is deodorant and anti-chafing for the balls. And when you're all done doing your business, we have a nice, fitted pair of the softest boxers on the market. If you guys want to find yourself some, be sure to visit manscaped.com or follow the link down in the description. Use discount code TRR20 for 20% off your order today. All right, guys, so you're going to need yourself a pizza stone for this. This is going to replicate how we cook our pizzas in the store. Now, we use an insulation screen because we cook at a lot higher temperature. Go ahead and set your oven to as high as it goes, 500, 550, whatever it may be. Hit bake. I'm gonna do 500 for today's purpose because that's what most people's ovens will tap out at. And then you're gonna put this on your screen in here. So mine slides out. You're gonna set that right there. Go ahead and put it in the top. Now I have a double oven. The top one just cooks a little bit faster. So keep in mind that if you have one big oven, it's not gonna cook quite as fast and you may need to adjust your cook times or temp based on that. This should be pretty easy to pull off of the thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna put a little bit of flour here. And I'm going to take my cornmeal. You've gotta mix it with flour. I've never seen anybody mix it with flour. And that is one secret that maybe I shouldn't be giving away, but we're going to. Um, the cornmeal helps bring out some of those forward notes in that garlic powder and that onion powder This is what our dough is gonna look like. You're always gonna keep that sticky side down I just want to show you some of these bubbles and stuff. That's exactly what we're looking for That's the the mixing time that is gonna give us that look. So now we're gonna go ahead This is gonna be right before we put it in the oven So if you need to go ahead and put it down on the counter do the exact same thing just a little bit of cornmeal and a little bit of flour and then the same thing on the top. In the pizzeria, obviously I have a uh, big pan that has this stuff already in it, but for home purposes, we're just gonna go ahead and do it this way. Now there's a few different ways you can stretch this pizza. There's, you can push down and you can pull from the outside and pull it over each other. You can put it up in your hands and you can go back and forth while rotating it and let gravity kind of help do its thing. We're gonna throw just a little bit more here on the bottom. I may have just put a tiny bit too much oil. So now you can go ahead and you can stretch it like this. You can stretch it like this. Or you can toss it 
This is where hand toss comes from. Now, one thing that I want you guys to notice here is see how the edge is staying thicker and the inside is getting thinner? The inside will naturally stretch as you stretch the outside. So what I'm gonna do now at this point, I'm gonna flip it over to the, so the sticky side is up, and I'm gonna go ahead and hold down on one side, just a little light pressure, and I'm going to stretch just that outside. Now, like I've said, the faster you move, the easier this stuff is to work with. Go ahead and flip it over one more time. I may have let that air out just a little bit. If you're getting some of this wrinkling, go ahead and cover with a little air space, uh, maybe 30 minutes sooner. Now, we're gonna go ahead and put that on our peel here. Make sure that it's not sticking. You guys have seen me use a docker inside the pizzeria for today's video, fork. Now, don't worry, this does not make any of the sauce go through. All this is gonna do is create a air release for those bubbles so that we don't get a nice bubbly pizza. Now, some of you guys may like bubbles, do a little less, do a little more, whatever. Make it with me and adjust your guys' in-house cooking to what works best for you. Here I've got some of my favorite ingredients. You guys can get a little creative. I've got some onions, pepperoni. Here I've got my Parmesan cheese. I've got bacon bits, a ranch sauce if you guys don't like a pizza sauce. But for today's video, we're gonna be using this marinara. And I also have some green peppers that are cut up. For the cheese, we're gonna be using a low moisture whole milk mozzarella. I'm gonna need a spoon to spread the sauce. And the sauce, if you guys want, let me know down in the comments below and I'll make a video on how to make pizza sauce at home. So we're gonna go ahead. Now you wanna be generous with this, but at the same time, you don't wanna drown the pizza. Nobody likes a soggy pizza. If you push like this, you're gonna just push everything off. If you just put it on top and you lightly glide it across in a half circle motion, you're gonna go ahead and get the easiest spread in the least amount of time. Make sure there's no dry bites. A soggy pizza is not good, but a dry pizza is not good either. Just like that. And then we're gonna go ahead and take some cheese. Now the base layer of cheese is not as important as the top layer. You're gonna go ahead, flip your hand upside down and push it off with your thumb. And that will give you full control of where the cheese is going. Now I'm gonna go ahead and throw my pepperonis on. I like to do these about a pepperoni space apart with just a little bit of room for them to overlap. If somebody does extra pepperoni, all I do is I go through and I fill those gaps. Now that I've got my flat toppings on, I'm gonna go ahead and put my other layer of cheese on. Now make sure you go all the way out to the crust with this because if you don't, it's gonna slide in. All these toppings will slide a little bit on top of the sauce. If you like a little less cheese, go ahead and put a little less cheese. If you like a little more cheese, go ahead and add a little more. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna throw on our green peppers. Those, I'm gonna go ahead and space in between the pepperoni. So that way you get a bite of pepperoni, a bite of cheese, and a bite of green pepper all in the same thing. Go ahead and space those out evenly, just like we did the rest of our toppings. Make it nice and consistent. Take onions, do the same thing. I am just gonna be using onions as a little flavor adder. You don't want clumps of onions or piles of onions. Unless you're into that stuff, then do whatever you want. Now we're gonna go ahead and add some bacon bits. Make sure to break these up as much as you can. You don't want a big pile of bacon like that. Just break those up and kinda get them across the whole thing. Bacon is more of a flavor adder. If you, if, if you want a whole strip of bacon, I guess just go ahead and throw it there. But go ahead and take this, break it up just a little bit, and spread it out nice and even. Once your oven is up to temp, you need to make sure that that stone gets really, really warm because if you put it on too cool of a stone, you won't cook your crust on the bottom and your top will cook faster than the bottom. My daughter's here joining us to help make us this pizza. Say hi. 
Hi. So this part right here, we're gonna make sure to pull this stone out. And remember, this is very hot. Just give it to where you have access to pull it off of your peel. I forgot to add a little bit of Parmesan. Go ahead and uh, I like Parmesan. Hey, Cozy Honey. What's wrong? Go ahead and sprinkle a little bit of Parmesan on there for some flavor. And then we're gonna move this over to the oven. Go ahead and get that on your screen. Make sure to put enough cornmeal down, especially in the middle, because you can lift up on the outsides. You can't go back once you put it down and put all your toppings on. I mean, you can, but it's kind of a pain. Go ahead and get that centered in the middle of your oven. Set your timer for about four minutes. Check on it there, see where you're at. What we're looking for is that perfect golden brown on the outside. A little more done is better on a stone-baked pizza than a little less done, in my opinion. I'm not a huge fan of the super, super doughy texture on the inside. I want chewy, but I don't want underdone. So I'm going to go ahead, set my timer for four minutes, and we'll come back and check in with you guys then. Alrighty, so it's only been about two minutes, but I just wanted to show you guys the process of this. So our edge is starting to puff up. That's a perfect size crust. Maybe, maybe just a hair too thick. Our four minute timer just went off. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out just to show you guys what it looks like. Oh man, this is looking really, really nice. Really, really nice. Now, what I'm gonna do at the four minutes is I'm gonna check the back. If the back is cooking the same as the front, you don't have to rotate it. Right now, towards the end, it's more important that you rotate it if it needs it than it is in the beginning but you don't wanna to wait too long because it's hard to come back. So it's a perfect balance of finding out, hey, is this side browning more than the other? Okay, let's flip it. And once you start to see the brown, it's gonna take a minute or you know 45 seconds to catch up to that. So you have to flip it a minute or two in advance. So I can see that the back side is starting to cook a little bit faster. I'm gonna pull it out. You guys might not be able to see the color yet, but this side is starting to get a little darker. So that's why I say you have to catch it in advance Right here's a little darker, right here's a little lighter. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this so that we're on the back side. Now, what you also need to do is check the bottom of your pizza and make sure that the bottom is matching exactly what the top looks like. You guys see how we just got that crunch there? We're already starting to get soft, or um, we're already starting to get that crispy, crunchy outside. This side right here is still soft. I'm thinking we need two, maybe three minutes on this. So I'm gonna go ahead, get this back in the oven, and check in with you guys in just a minute. Alrighty guys, while this finishes up cooking, we're gonna go ahead and check on our dough that we just barely made. So, let you guys get a peep of that. All those wrinkles are disappearing, and it, we're gonna be probably an hour, hour and a half on this before we cover it up. Let's go ahead and open the oven up and see what it looks like. Oh man, that smell is just amazing coming off of that thing. All right, so let's pull this out, show you guys exactly what we're working with. So this is the side that was lighter that I was just talking about. This is the side that was darker. We are almost there to that perfect crunch. Let you guys see the bottom. That's looking perfect. So what we need is one more minute on this side in the back, and then we're gonna be perfect on this. You guys can see already right here, the crust is starting to crunch up and get that little darker. I would rather this then hit the dough and have it imprinted. Okay, so we just hit the time. I think that'll be perfect for the cook. Now let's pull it out and see. Beautiful. So we got the exact same color all the way around the pizza. I'm gonna grab my cutter real quick. And I'm gonna go ahead and just check how the inside of that looks. Man, this could not be better. We've got a good thick crust on there. 
not extra thick, but it is a little thicker than I ended up wanting it to be. But I did tell you guys that dough size was a little thicker than we had planned. This is supposed to be for a 14 inch pizza. It ended up being about 13 or so inches. So I think we were right on the money with our, our measurements and all that stuff. Now we're gonna go ahead, get this cut right down the middle and let you guys judge it. This cutter is not as nice as the one at my store. Okay, this is very hot. I'm getting burnt right now. The bottom, oh, that is very, very hot. But we don't have any sag in our crust. That looks amazing. We're cooked all the way through. We've got a nice crisp layer on the top, on the bottom. It's holding all those toppings. So you know we didn't put too many toppings. I would eat this right now, but I'm gonna burn my mouth. So we're gonna give it maybe two, three minutes, let it cool down, and then we'll show you guys what it tastes like. I'm a little nervous to try this at home, but now that we've rested just a little bit, you can see we've got a little bit of flexibility in our crust, but not too much, which is perfect. <laughs> that's way too hot, so. Oh my gosh, but that's good, way too hot. We got this all cooled down. Kind of cooled down. Very crunchy, crispy outside with a nice chewy inside. Go ahead and get that. <laughs> Go ahead and get that ripped open for you guys just so you can see that. That's good pizza. Alrighty guys, so final thoughts on the pizza. So I think the bottom is just a little too crunchy. But I think this outside, perfect. Absolutely perfect. So maybe just a tiny bit less oil on the dough ball or in the on the plate and uh, a little bit thinner on the dough. So the dough is great. It tastes amazing. There's tons of flavor packed in there. But I think if we brought it down just a tiny bit. The bottom would not cook so much before the rest of it cooked. And I think overall you just have a better cheese to sauce to topping ratio. Bear with me guys, this is my first time actually making a single dough ball at home, but I thought I would figure and throw you guys a recipe, tell you guys what, how you can kind of uh, duplicate what we're doing inside of the store at home. If you guys have any feedback for me, drop it down in the comments below. Also, I wanna know what you guys think, if this works out for you. Um, next, we're gonna make some breadsticks, so if you guys wanna see that video, go ahead and click on this link, and we'll catch you there.